Hey, flip out the roofs. All right, so today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install these flip out drawers. Uh, they're relatively easy to do. Uh, you can do it to an existing sink or bathroom sink, uh, generally underneath uh, wherever the sink is at in that cabinet. There's not a lot of room to put a drawer in here. You can't have a drawer going back. So a lot of times what we do is uh, put these flip outs. Now, many cabinet shops will just have a false front here screwed on so that it, you can't really use it. But in my case, I do wanna use it, so I wanna put these in. I'm gonna show you how to do that in my cabinet, and you can easily apply this to your cabinet at home. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing, now I'm working with a cabinet that's brand new, so I don't have any drawer fronts on here. But the first thing I do is remove your drawer fronts. Now, most of the time you're gonna have a sink here, so all of that is going to happen from below here. And uh, that's probably gonna be the most time consuming uh, part of installing these flip outs. Now, once you start working on the flip outs, almost everything else can be done through the front here. But, um, you know, until, until you get that front piece popped out, you have to sort of work on it from underneath. Now, most of the time they'll have two pieces of wood that if you have a face frame, it'll be attached, the piece of wood will be attached to it with a screw going into the um, back of the door of the drawer face. And all you have to do is remove those and pull that. Most of the time they're not glued in, they're not uh, permanently there, but just in case you want to put something like this in. Now, when you have a face frame, your door will overlap the face frame like that, so that it'll be an overlapping uh, drawer front. Mine are insert drawer fronts. So the Revolve shelf, Revolver shelf um, package that I purchased uh, does work on both. I think it says for overlap. And they do have an inset one for inlay, for inset doors, or drawers, I should say. And, um, but that wasn't available. So I picked mine up on Amazon. It wasn't, wasn't all that much, but they do come with a couple little templates. So once you get the drawer front removed off of here, you can use this template to get it lined up and it works relatively good. And, uh, if you get it pretty close, you have some adjustments that you can make afterwards to get everything smooth and uh, working right. So this template here is for the mounting bracket and that's this mounting bracket right here. It's going to go onto my frame. Now you notice that I added pieces here to make sure that they're flush and that works out really well and to my advantage of putting these in. So the first thing I'm going to do is add this and it's going to go right to the edge of my purple heart here because that's my three quarter mark and I'm going to make a mark and I'm using an all, an all. Now you could actually if you wanted to um, you could just drill straight in there but I find it easier to do this first than to actually just go right in with the drill. All right, so I have my four marks there and I'm gonna do the four on the other side here. And any type of marker, uh, hole marker that you can use will be fine. They, they have some snap ones that you can line up and just snap on and it creates the indentation for you. So once I have that, these marked out, I'm gonna go ahead and drill those out. So I don't need to go very far in here because this is plywood, so um, it doesn't need a really lengthy drill. Now, fortunately, both sides that I'm dealing with here on these cabinets, um, they're both unfinished sides, so there's no, um, even if I went all the way through, you wouldn't see it where it's going to be located. And a lot of times it sinks that way. Now, if you do have a finished side, you definitely want to make sure that you don't drill too far into it. Oops. Wow, that was a cheap bit. Um, you don't want to drill too far into it. Otherwise, you're going to have issues uh, on the outside here with the drill holes. You have to fill them in. So let me get another, or too much of an angle. Not so good drilling left-handed. 
So let's try not to break this drill bit. And there we go. And the other thing too is I could be lining up perfectly and hitting these drill, uh, these screws here. So, all right. So once I have these drilled out, then I want to go and put all my hardware on my drawer front. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so the next thing to do is come over here and uh, drill out the holes into your um, drawer front. Now, um, because I want to make sure that I don't want to go through on the drawer front, I'm going to mark my drill bit so that I can see exactly how deep I should go. A lot of times people ask what size drill bit you should use for the screws. So that depends. If I'm drilling in plywood like we just did there, uh, an eighth inch would be fine because the screw, you know, can spread that plywood pretty easy. But if you're drilling into uh, something like this hardware, this maple here, you want to get a drill bit that's going to be uh, a little thicker. So generally what I do, and let me see, hopefully I can get it on this camera here, is I line it up so that I line up the drill bit with the screw so that Basically, the thickness of this of this drill bit is going to be the thickness, just about the thickness of the body of the screw. And that way, once you make the hole, all you have are the threads grabbing onto it. You don't have to have the, the screw actually push that thing apart so much. So that's the idea behind uh, um, how thick you should have the screw for the type of wood that you're using. Now, I'm going to measure down here to make sure that I don't go all the way through. And put that piece of tape on it. Oops, just drop pulled it right off. So let me double check here. Yeah, because I do want it to go down far enough so that um, I have a decent hole about the about the length of the screw, about the length of the screw. But I want it to make want to make sure that I don't go through this piece of wood here because that would be bad. So I will put this in there. So the way I do that, I guess I should explain that, you saw me do it, is I just wrapped a piece of tape to show me the depth that I should have on there. It's a, a very, very old woodworking trick. Definitely nothing I invented. All right, so the um, kit comes with this little template here for where these hinges are gonna attach onto the drawer front there. And the first thing is decide what part, what part of the drawer you want to be the bottom. I decided that uh, I think I'm going to have this part be the bottom here because I have a little black stain right there. But I do like the way that this looks, so I want that up to the top because people most of the time will notice. I mean, you're going to notice the bottom too, but because it's a base cabinet, you're going to always be looking down at it. So you place this and line that up. Line that up with the edges here. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark my center on these like that and I got to push a little bit more into maple maple's a little harder wood than that plywood over there that may even though it's maple plywood solid maple is way different than maple plywood and again I'm lining up the four edges of this template here and because I am doing a inset drawer I can use the edges of these of this drawer. Now, if you were using an overlay drawer, one that extends past the frame on the outside, the first thing you do is you mark where that face frame hits on your drawer, and then you mark the lines on the back, and then you would place this in the corner of those lines, and that's where you'd want to line this up. But because there's an inlet, it actually works perfect. Now, I actually move this just slightly off this edge a little bit. I, I want it to be slightly over that way, although you do have some adjustment uh, slots that allow you to move back and forth on this. So, uh, you know, you do have some wiggle room there. All right, so now I'm going to drill out my hole here. Holes, I should say. I think I said hole, but I have four of them to drill out. And I'm just going down to where the tape touches. Once the tape starts clearing away that sawdust, I know that I've gone far enough. And so you want to make sure that you have the left and right drawers. And it does have a mark on them as to which one is. This is left. 
and this is right. So this is the bottom of the drawer. It's going to sit like that. These are going to go there and then the drawer opens up outward. So I'm going to set that in there. Get these started here. You have two separate types of um, screws that come with this. Some are flat head and some are um, recessed heads. So flat heads go on this part right here. Now my recommendation is that you put these on as tight as you can and then loosen them up with a um, Phillips here because what's going to happen is you want them a little bit loose so that they could fit in there and this piece could move around a little bit. You want that to adjust back and forth a little. But you don't want them so loose that, uh, you know, because you're going to have to tighten that back up by hand once it, once it gets inside. And that may not be so easy, especially when you're working from the outside of just that little opening. And um, a smaller Phillips will be better too, and I'll grab one of those here in a minute. And put this one on. So like I said, I go all the way down tight with the, let's see, oops, with the drill. Um, you want to go tight with the drill because that way the, you've opened the hole all the way. You're not going to have to tighten up with the hand. I'm going to make sure this one's tight here because this one's a little bit loose. There we go. So this, you're going to get more torque out of this than you are your hand, but then I'm going to loosen it up just a little bit with my hand. Now the nice thing is once it's already down tight, it's opened up that hole all the way, so it makes it a little easier for you to tighten up after the fact. All right, so those are in here. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to place this um, piece right here into the drawer. Now, I, now this is a 14 inch, uh, the next size was too large for my drawers. So I just put it in the center. Now this also has a little notch here and it's right here on, on the um, paper there. And you would put that at the top of your drawer and drill out your hole or at the top of your line that you would have there and use this as your hole placement. But because these are insert drawers, I don't need that at the very top. That's where it would end up if I, if I use that thing. So I'm actually gonna bring it down a little bit, right about here, I think. And then I'm just gonna make, and I wanna make the holes at the top of that little cutout. Because once this, in the, you see that it's wide down here and small right up towards the top there. And I want to make that, um, I want to use this top part to actually put my punch through to make my marks. And then again, we use the round ones here because uh, we want that to slide. Or the flat heads, I should say. And again, I'm gonna go all the way in with them. And I should actually, I just thought of that right now as I, as I was drilling that one, I saw how tough that was to go in. But fortunately, I'm working on a big part of the of the wood there, so I didn't get any cracking, but I don't want it to crack. So I just went ahead and cleared that out. Can't talk and do work at the same time, I think, is, is my problem. All right. All right, so what I'm going to do is loosen these up. And then slide on my drawer front here, just to make sure that they fit and everything lines up good. That looks good, looks about the same there. And then now, all I would have to do is just tighten it up just a little bit once I get it in there, but I want this out for right now. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to install my handle on the front, uh, because once I get it in there, if you're working from inside that uh, you know, if you, if you put a handle on, if you're not putting a handle, it wouldn't make a difference. But uh, if, you were, if you were working from inside that opening where the drawer is, it would be real difficult to put this handle on. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on right now. And then that's also going to help me, you know, align the drawer and make sure that everything uh, is good there. So let me get this on here. 
And I already have the, drill, the holes uh, pre-drilled into this drawer here. And I actually countersunk them a little bit so they sit down because obviously this is going to sit on top of it. It's not going to make much of a difference at all. But um, I just didn't want it to sit down too much on it. Get that there so you can see it. And with handles and stuff like that, I always, um, you know, unless it's a really long screw or I'm trying to get a lot of them assembled at once, uh, I generally use my hand. Screwdriver on it, or Phillips on it. And that looks good, looks squared up, so I'm gonna tighten that up. Now again, all of this stuff has to come off when I start to do all the finish on these cabinets. And that's okay, I'd rather have it all together first. All right, so, and then do my finishing. So you can see the, these are adjustable, which is which is good. And so now I'm going to take it on over there and I'm going to go ahead and put my screws in on that part over there. So let's head back on over to the cabinet. All right, so back over here at my cabinet, um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, set all these screws and then take them back out again. Again, I want to make it as easy as possible once I get that piece in there. So. And in this case, I don't want to go all the way in because these are flathead screws. I just go right up to the uh, touch point of the head. And you know, you can, use this, you can use the same screw if you want. Okay, so I definitely have a screw that that's hitting on over there. So what I think I'm gonna do on this side is there are four, there are actually four holes in that um, hinge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the back two holes uh, because I have the front two holes on this one here. I'm gonna use the back two holes, that way it doesn't hit up against each other and the screw's going straight. And actually, it probably would be a little easier to just use the back holes anyway. Because when you put this in, you have that mechanism in your way. So again, using a power drill, that allows me to get um, the holes so that they're opened enough to where it's easy to screw this in by hand uh, because that will play into it. So when you open this up, it wants to do this all the time. So you sort of have to keep it open as you put in the first screw here. Um, otherwise, it'll be an issue. Oops, just adjust that a little bit. This is where we as woodworkers wish we had more hands. Because um, that would be so much easier. As a matter of fact, I know what I can do here. I think I'm gonna try to give myself an extra hand. Let's see if this will help. Hold it in place a little bit till I get the screw in. And my Phillips. Do you do that? Like you just set a tool down and two minutes later you spend 10 minutes looking for where you set that tool that you just set down? All right. So as you can see, a big advantage of having this pre-drilled to be able to screw that in. Especially once I start going from that direction because I'm not very good left-handed. Alright. These work pretty 
be good. Now, the nice thing about this side is that I can clamp it from the back here, which I think might be easier. So as you can see, there's a big advantage of being able to work on this from the back. Now, if you had the sink in there, all of this would be happening up front here. You'd have to go in through this angle right here, which is really not too bad right now. But I can go with my strong hand, my right hand, and do this. All right, so let's see how close we are. Wow. Okay, so I can see that it needs to come over this way a little bit. Now, I think I left that loose enough to where I can do with the handle. I'm not quite. So again, if you were doing this from the front, you would have to open this up and go ahead and loosen those up. But because I'm working from here, I can go ahead and loosen them up from the back side here. And see, I pushed it right back there again. So adjustments, you know, I mean, it actually fits right now in there, but what I'm going to do, just to make sure that I don't do that again, is I'm going to use my playing cards and put them in here as a spacer. Maybe not that much. There we go. I see that looks good, space in there. And we'll put Four up and eight there. Four up and eight there. All right, so that's a good spacing right there. I like that. Go ahead and tighten this up now. Actually, as soon as I'm looking from that side, I'm going to cheat. So now I have a nice little drawer pull out here. So all I have to do now is just double check my tightness on everything because I want this to stay in its location now. And like I said, they give you enough screws for just two of them on the side here. But all you'd need is like a 5 8 uh, flathead screw, a couple more, and I'll probably do that, put a couple more in there at different locations to lock that all down once it's all perfect. All right, so then after that, all that's left to do is add this drawer piece right here. Let me, let me see if I can get that with this one. I think I can. There we go. Now again, when you're doing that, You'd be better off, matter of fact, for this whole thing, if, if you were working from the front here, I would recommend purchasing one of these, about three bucks, four bucks, 
Uh, they're not expensive at all. And uh, that way it allows you to come in here, tighten these down, and also to come here and tighten those down, and also for tightening this down right here, because you can see that fits in there just about perfect to make it easy for you to tighten that down. And there it is, that's, uh, that's how you install flip out front drawers on your false front drawers that you may have in your kitchen sink or bathroom sink now. And it does add a little bit extra room. The nice thing about this one is it has a little soap dish here. It has a ring holder, so you can put your ring on when you're washing uh, the dishes. This one here, just wide open, and a slot for sponges, um, brushes, whatever else you may have that's going in there. So um, worth the investment, and it's just not that much. And there'll be links below for all the pieces that are used on this that uh, you, know, you can go ahead and purchase if you'd like, and that helps out the channel also. And if you do like this content, uh, please do subscribe and please give it a like. That helps uh, boost the rating of the video and helps me get the video out to more people. I appreciate you sticking around this long and watching and stay tuned. Hopefully you'll be back for the next video.